we do not actually work with Pyronex anymore. It's been over one year since I even took one in. Uh, but I decided to make an exception. This old lady which had a handicap would really need her bike. Uh, so we'll try to fix it. And I will show you most of how we do it um, on video. Bionex has a lot of batteries. They are defunct. They are not um, the Canadian branch. Um, it's not existing anymore. They still have a European branch which might have some spare parts, but since there are no production anymore, <laughs> Bionex is pretty doomed. We know that they are manufacturing uh, most of their stuff. It's at least designed by BMZ in Germany. But of course, Bionex has all the patents, so BMZ wouldn't uh, help you even if you ask them very nicely and pay them millions of bucks. So if you have a Bionex, you're pretty much fucked. And um, if you have a battery with low capacity like this, that is only 6.6 .6 amp hours, 48 volt, but still, you, you need to have it repaired. If uh, you live in Europe, we recommend Swiss Waltz, which specialize in Bionex and all the extremely complicated batteries they charge a lot but if you want your Bionex fixed properly you should contact Swiss Waltz anyway that's the only place I know that even works with Bionex except us and we don't prefer working with them we can do it during the winter when we have less things to do they're very complicated and many times after we replace the cells they do not work and um, in two instances of this exact battery, I had to install a secondary BMS just to get the fucking charger to work. And it's not even a fucking charger, it's an adapter. The sh charger is built into the battery, which is so f incredibly stupid because a charger gets hot. And do not have a charger built into the battery that gets more hot. That's just so, that's what, one of thousands of things that Bionex and BMZ did wrong that made their battery fail. Still, many of them have lasted for 10 years, but Doing crappy stuff like that doesn't really help in the end. So if your charger breaks, your battery breaks. Because the charger is inside and absolutely not ever meant to be open. And the idiots put fuses inside. Why do you put fuses inside if it's impossible to open the case? If you're supposed to have a fuse, it's supposed to be in the outside accessible. And this stupid fucking thing. Hello. Hello. Ooh, touch me. It's an indicator that goes on uh, when you touch it. I don't think it's touch activated. I think it's a light sensor. So when you block it, it turns on. And there's a two pin connector, so you can change the adapter, but it cannot be a charger. You need to be a switching adapter. And yeah, there's so much fucking crap here. Uh, they have decided to make the adapter 26 volts to make sure you can use this adapter on all Bionex batteries, even though this one is 48 volt. So there's also a DC step up converter in here that gets hot and is not efficient. Just so they can use this thing. Oh, there, there's so much crap with Bionex. And hope, thankfully there, there isn't more than a few hundred Bionex ever sold in Sweden. Uh, the only reason people bought Bionex because it was the only, only uh, do-it-yourself e-bike kit that wasn't made 100% in China. <laughs> it's actually made 100% in China, but it was designed in Canada and developed in Germany and manufactured in China. So it costs like four or five times as much as any other Chinese e-bike kit. But if you could afford like two to three thousand dollars for, for an e-bike kit with a battery, then some people bought it because it was the only high-end option. I have so much negative things to say about Bionex and being said. But the, but the basic thing is they overcomplicate stuff that are simple. That that's the main big fucking reason why they fail. They make stuff ten times more complicated, which all these custom cases and everything has to be super super special. Nothing can be a generic shiny part. That's the German engineering way. You build everything super complicated, like this cruiser, and you have a really cool product that no one will buy because it's too expensive. So we have uh, removed all three screws. We have two ones in the box. So one is already on the loose, even though I cleaned my it's supposed to be four ones. One is <laughs> down here. 
One, two, three. No, this one is still in here. So we have all the screws. And these ones are quite easily replaceable. But not the screws on the other end. They need to be the exact length and width and girt and blah, 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 blah. And here we have added tape because it's very stupid to have the opening of the case in the middle where rain likes to sit. Of course, rain can rinse off, but if it's snow and that heats and gets cold, it usually pressure the water and snow to go into the battery. So adding a piece of tape over here is actually a good idea. I don't know if Bionex did it or the customer. Yeah, I did remove the screw for this light. Now, here we go. Yes, and why should you mark up which is positive and negative? No, you shouldn't do that. Uh, they marked up the wires with positive, which you can tell because it's fucking red. And the negative wires, it's black. But why should you mark it on the PCB? Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, you cannot really work with something hanging out like this. So I usually take a bit of swat with black tape and it's such a big piece. So I just put it over here to remember that that is the black side. So I don't think it has reverse polarity protection and you do not wanna yeah, connect them. I think you turn them on on the e-bike. So I don't think there's any power in them. Sometimes it could take hours to open this case up. I'm hoping that is not the case. There are some sweet spots. We can add your screwdriver. And another thing with the Bionex is this connector, which is actually, you can probably recognize them from old VGA computers and stuff like that. Uh, but this one has two high amp connectors, but these ones usually get really dirty, especially, especially the communication ones. So th this is also something that is very hard to replace if it's damaged. You can always do a long wire and connect it manually, but uh, it's so hopeless. Hopefully this will be my last Bionics video. I don't think I will accept them again. Uh, they have two very large silicone bumps uh, on each side of the battery packs. So taking it apart is one of the most difficult things. This is even Segway worthy and you do not want to damage the electronics, the charger or the cells. So. Yeah, it's just... We managed to get a little slack on one end, it closes on the other. Uh, you can remove these plates, but remember that they are not identical and they need to be inserted in a very special way uh, for them to work. Yeah, the electronics is hosed up here. But that's the most uh, part where you don't want to damage everything. Just above the connector is a good space and if you can jam something in here. There is the famous fuse, I think. That's impossible to get to.
really matter what you do in the end it comes to all the brute force yeah and there are also two these two or three or maybe four pins locking pins yeah maybe there is two and it's a good idea to have things pinned in here so that it doesn't close up and now we have all the pins removed at least now we can use brute force uh, and there's uh, inverse clamps you could probably use oh. Yeah, and you do not want to damage anything. Yeah, that's it. Here you can see all the silicone they actually added on the top and down here. Here were the clamps mostly holding it together. And they are identical silicone molds, down, silicone down here and also down here. Uh, so, so, this, so the best way to open this up is to cut through the heat shrink tubing. Um, this is side, it doesn't have any electronics. And before we usually want to check that the charger is working. Because they said the battery was working but very low capacity. The charger does not have any indicators but usually they communicate with sound this one probably doesn't have the speaker but it's okay red is for start checking and i think orange is for charging and if it's flashing then something is wrong that's usually the problem i got after repair it start the red charging cycle and it turns light red or orange but then it stops after like 30 seconds but this one seems to be charging so hopefully we will get the same sequence after the repair and it did have a speaker here and here is the famous fuse that you can't get a hold of and the PCB and some versions they don't even use BMS you know a company is fucking idiots when they don't even use a BMS. Even if it's 10 years old, they should know that a lithium battery needs a BMS. Sometimes they just have a temp sensor, like a nickel cadmium battery. But this version, I think have, um, because I can see a lot of BMS wires. And they're using, many times they're using Sony cells. And I think uh, that's where the rumor started that you don't need a BMS if you have Sony cells because they magically balance each other and they do not. But in this they have something 22P, which was actually a very good cell 10 years ago. It's not used today, but I think you can still buy it. And it's like super cheap, like $1 per cell. Usually 22F is used today for some reason. It's identical but green and I don't want to damage this sticker. Here it says DLG, but it's the sticker is identical to the ones um, BMZ use on all their battery packs. So we know it's BMZ. There are so many telltales that it's BMZ and makes Bionex batteries. So. Yeah, you even have nightmares for weeks after I do a Bionex battery, so... And we do not charge enough. You really can't charge enough for a Bionex battery repair. And you see in this config, they had a, a they had the ability to make any battery case, and they made this fucking ugly dolphin, and they have to force the cells into this silly, 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 super silly config. And I don't think I've seen this before, but it's actually a protective shield from all the heat in the charger and the BMS. <laughs> yeah, it's a 48 volt 13S battery. And what you want to do when working with this is take a lot of pictures. 
and sometimes the wires they, there's not enough colors to have all like 14 wires so they reuse some, some, some colors so you can separate them by the length stuff like that and some of the wires are multicolored as well making it even more messy and there are like split cell groups I think this one has that as well and there's just no slack um, we can remove the GST wires and this super connector I think we will have this done and you can see here at every single wire they added some kind of polyfuse Mm, there's an additional four wires that I think go into the discharging port and we have this and sometime one time these wires just came loose I didn't know which one were positive or negative and uh, I don't know which one is for discharging and charging why should you mark that so we're gonna remove this one carefully mm, here is some silicone yes yeah, I think we have separated the two evils. Yeah, I'm gonna save this sticker on my sticker wall. Well, this is my Hall of Fame. And you can see that BMZ has the exact identical um, sticker making machine. Uh, but this one are made High Tech Energy, which is a company in Taiwan that also make battery packs. And DLG is probably another battery pack manufacturer, most likely in China. But I think BMC is the one that designs the PMB and the battery pack. And then either High Tech Energy or DLG is manufacturing them for BMZ that sells them as Bionex. But I'm gonna try keeping until I have 10 Bionex. That is probably more than anyone else in the world except Swiss Waltz. Mm, here you can see part of the config. Uh, it's a 3P config. We offer the customers 10.5 amp hours because that's the maximum we can fit in here. Like why are they having this uh, isolator ring on the negative terminal? Don't you understand that it's negative and negative? You do not have to have that. Bionex. Bionex. Uh, you do want to build another battery pack and then move the wires over one by one. But you do want to know what kind of config they have beforehand. And just look at this mess. Yeah, and I think some of them are temp sensors. There we are, the positive going there. And that should have a wire, yes, going here to here. Shoop, shoop. Yeah, it's so complicated learning this design, especially when you do it just once every other year. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the glue gun on and start trying to copy and paste this shit. Gonna make a triangle and three rows. Yeah, they use uh, silicone, but they probably have uh, a mold or something they put them in. Which I do not. You cannot use any type of holder because there isn't room. There isn't like that. There's like one millimeter of wiggle room. And I did wrong. I did wrong. Three positive, three negative, three negative, yes. Then we're gonna figure out step number two. Positive, positive, five positives in a row. And you do want to mark them up 
Okay, this one is A. And you do want to mark them in two spaces if you blur some of the letters. Yeah, you're not seeing everything I do, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is that you never attempt this yourself because you will have nightmares. Don't say I didn't warn you. Bottom. Everyone has the same orientation. One, two, three, four, five. cells are positive down except for this one is that right yes And the last block. Three positives and three negatives. now everyone is positive yes it's correct if you turn your spawn cell around it will add to nightmares uh, four negatives on the top and one positive on the end done gluing uh, now I'm gonna uh, use nickel from my uh, little nickel bin since I have no idea what sizes I need and try to add all of this together I won't do that on camera but I will show you once it's done so now I'm finally done with uh, putting nickel on this battery pack and as you can see on this config it's simply insane 
it's so complicated and you cannot do anything wrong or you will start a uh, nickel fire it's like nickel back but worse uh, and i have not even been able to look at the battery because i need the wires to stay put so i can um move them over one by one so i had to guess the connection they're using over here and i'm on 100 almost 100 percent sure that this is exactly how they do it um, there is simply no other way. Uh, the soldering tabs for the EST, I might have put a little bit different, but you do not want to forget the soldering tab for the EST or you have to open up this motherfucker again. Here is the only loose connection you have to worry about. Having soldering tabs over here, connect them with the wire. And there are many different Bionex configs. Even if you learn just yes, this one, you can be pretty sure if you ever come across another Bionex battery, it will be a totally different world. The positive connection, I have soldering tabs on all the blocks. And I won't be able to use the isolators because they're stuck between the cells. And I do not want to remove them yet, so I have to add insulating tape and then glue it together and pray and hope I did everything by the book, which you cannot buy. Uh, I decided to use my tape cutting machine and just uh, go wild with this tape. And do a layers on both sides, overlapping each other and it should be fine. Very thin tape, but... A little bit extra. And it's a 48 volt battery, so if you touch the wrong cells when turning it over, uh, you will get a small shock. The two strips are perfect. You shouldn't be able to see almost any nickel when you put all, all the tape. Robert, I think it's a good one. Good one? Yeah, I think it's a good one. Yeah, If I done anything wrong now, it will start to spark. Yeah, here I need some more tape. What is this? Uh, it's a soldering tab. Yeah. That is, it's, it's upside down now. And the glue will be another isolating layers, making it another millimeter between the cells and all the 
wires. Yeah, and here I have two nickel strips. I need to separate them so I can fold them better. Hopefully, hopefully I did it exactly like it is in Germany. And you can add some extra adhesive here if you think you're done right. But if you're done wrong, you're gonna regret yourself adding even more glue. But you do not want it folding apart when you work with it, so I think that's enough. <sighs> Now comes um, flipping over all the wires. And I might not have um, all the wires in the same place. So one thing I wanna check before, if uh, now the BMS has been powerless for a while, if I connect uh, the BMS again, will it charge? If not, we should definitely not continue. And which end do you put it in? Yeah. This way. Also this wire. And here you have the glue. You know it's not upside down. And there should be a small spark. I think, yes, uh, I don't think you saw that, but I heard there was a small spark when connecting it. No, 500 millivolts. Uh, let's connect this one just to make sure. That's a kind of loop. Now, maybe that was for the charging port or what? Oh, I'm so stupid. That was for the charging port. Uh, there is another four pin wire here. So. It's charging, so we will go ahead and change the wires. I was scared there for a moment. <laughs> yeah, it's the only battery I will be doing today, so better damn well work. The last, oh no, it's not the last. There are so many other problems. Putting it back in the case without damaging the PCB because it has to be on these plates and we might have a few micrometers less or more. You see, yes. Also see my nice new shirt. From Dressman. Yeah, and the wires are gonna be a little short so you can remove that piece of tape. And there's no way to measure afterwards that you done right because it's a micro GST, so no probes I know will fit there. So I go ahead and glue them. I prefer to glue them. Glue them, glue them. Now where is the next? I was supposed to have one over here. Maybe I put it on the other side. It's on these three down or on. Now I've put it on the top over here on the negative part. So this is the same. As this one. Do not like putting them over the positive. Uh, but 
it's the exact same length from the big tape blob so it will be okay Uh, but I'm also gonna be measuring it, another one to make sure it's 3.5 watts. Yeah, 3.5 volts positive. Yes, I have very little feeling in my fingers because I do this all the time. And we have that one, it's supposed to be on the other side and it's lilac and white. And I have it on the same space, which is a positive. So I will insulate it a little bit extra yeah you're not supposed to see everything I'm doing half of the fun is guessing that you've done it correctly so there 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 next one should be the orange one and i have um, almost the same place well i'll twist them and remove everything not necessary. Glue it, it's off. That's why it's so lifeless. After we have the orange one, we should have something over here. Which could it be? Gray or yellow? I have one over here. I think it's the yellow one. Because you do not get any spare lives. We will measure from over here and that's four volts. That's three point four, so it's the same. Yeah. Vill du med någon? Ja, hur mycket tar vi för att sätta in och ut i cykeln? Ja, eh... Hur mycket tid har du lagt ner? Mer än vad jag önskat. Typ en timme personlig. eller? Nej, jag tror inte det. Och sen när jag tog av det gick det ganska smärtfritt. Nu var jag tvungen att sätta i och sen ta ut det igen, så det tog mig en timme den här gången. Ja. Tyvärr. Men jävla, jag fick ta ut hela batteriet igen och jag var tvungen att fästa tejpbitar på varsin sida. Så ja. det någonting att dra ut det med. Ja. Det gick ju till slut. Ja. Nu lägger jag lådan här. Ja. Men säg en timme eh, på avmontering och så var det någonting sagt med, eller för installationen. Mm. Så var det någonting, kanske en kvart då för att fylla den också. Ja. And uh, now we should go with the green one. It's the no. Uh, there are two wires underneath, which I think is for a temp sensor. Yes, there are two temp sensors. We won't bother with them because they don't need to be soldered. No, you do not want to damage the temp sensor because do you think they will be easy to replace and do you think the BMS will work if the temp sensors are broken? No. So be careful about the temp sensors.
so where do we do go after the green this one is folded but on the bottom the next step and I have my yeah, it's this blue one here is it folded these cells are the same group so it's the blue one I, I don't think this is much easier for the factory making these fucking packs. <laughs> I think it takes like one or two hours just for the fucking soldering. It could have been so much easier. So much easier. If they just had a little bit more space in the case. Maybe do not put the fucking charger in the battery case. Why is it not sticking? No. And we're doing the blue one. Nicklar till en grön. Ja, vill du ta den nu? Ja. Så in jag färdig till en fyra. Ja, ja men jättebra. Yeah, we're halfway there. Now we did the blue one. The other one is supposed to be around here somewhere. Most likely this lilac one. Here's, I think, another temp sensor. Yeah, two more temp sensors. Do I have a tab over there? Yes, I have a tab over there in a very, very bad space. Right under here. Lilac, I think we're going down to the gray one. Do I have anything over here? I should have it on this negative. I think I have it on no on the end here instead on the positive. And uh, not because it's also going away over here. And I have a small one down here that you won't be able to see. Yeah, now there's very little slack, but very few wires left. Now there's nothing on the top side here. Wire two. Where is the rest? Here is. red and white one let's go ahead and do that i don't think it's the next one in line but 
No, it's so fucking tight. Not transferring any heat. Need to go from this way. So I will actually add all the glue on this one so I can put it back together. Flip it over. Usually I leave all my super complicated batteries to my other employees so they get to uh, uh, experience different types of advanced batteries uh, but this one is so advanced I do not want to risk them damaging anything and it's just evil giving one of your employees a Bionex battery unless you have trained them for several years yes and here we have blue and white I'm gonna do that one right away oops I think we just have one or two left And there's a lot of temp sensors as well, but we're gonna do the positive one. So now we can flip this one over and see if we have any more wires or if it's just temp sensor. Here are four wires which are temp sensors. You can see that they are extended here and here is fucking mess. So all these are temp sensors but we have one white and one gray left. And I made the positive one here a little bit too small. Yeah, I even damaged it a little bit. And the red one. And add a lot of glue to keep it on. Temp sensor here are just so weird. I think we can turn this one over now. We will take this wire and here we have a white one left.
and we had a gray one which doesn't have I made a tab for that one Yeah, and as you can see, they have the wire going in here, so I maybe have to adjust these ones. my multimeter I forgot to give it a hug this morning so yeah, I didn't put them on the right slope but I think since they're so long I can bend them slightly This one should be even less difficult. So, yes, this last one wire, and they're using super thick wires. It's just, are they using 14 AVG for connecting two cells? Not two cell blocks, two cells. heat and cool down a lot of glue and hold down no it's too short why is it too short glue before and it's a positive cell so do not want to go through you need three hands for this Yes, that is a good connection. We will hold it in place, bend it out a little. And I think we actually made it. Now it's just the temp sensors. They do not need to be located um, in the cells like these. But you need to now add the glue here. As they are located in between the cells with silicone so they are just another hell we 
you need to do is actually take the cells apart so I will be cutting them open like this open them like that and Bionex also have these triangular spacers in between which you can reuse but they're totally unnecessary <laughs> because the cells touch each other anyway for some reason I think they they prefer to use them but Here they have three wires and three nickel strips. So unnecessary, but oh, I'm gonna need to crack this one open, and the other temp sensor fell out. Oh, that one came out dandy. So they have like one temp sensor in the middle of each block and uh, <laughs> a BMS on these batteries. So I think you can be pretty sure that they probably had a fire or something in um, an old battery when they add four temp sensor, four temp sensors from going from like one temp sensor and no BMS to BMS with four temp sensors. But I don't speak Dutch, so I cannot investigate that because I think it happened in Deutschland most likely because that's their biggest market. People who think, still think German engineering is better than Chinese engineering. They're most likely all located in Germany. German engineering is not better than Chinese engineering, it's just way more expensive and complicated. So you should probably use silicone uh, if you want them. I do not like to add heat to temp sensors even though they, these are cold, cold temperature probes. And you can just as easily put them over here. It's you don't need to be in between the cells. Those are most likely so you don't charge them in sub zero degrees. Or they're actually measuring the temperature and giving input to the BMS and stuff like that, logging. Oh, yeah. I have the fan on, otherwise, I will be drenched in blood, sweat, and tears by now. They're so thin wires and so easily damaged. Yeah, I don't think I want to do much more before testing it.
and you know we have all this space there is nothing over here or here in the battery so so I think it's ready for testing turn everything off no not that one um, it will be protected in here PCB and we also had that little nice plate we will add new heat shrink tube and later we know it's successful and there's almost no space for all the wires almost this should be enough slack Yeah, and uh, yeah, now we're getting somewhere. And now there should be a spark if you've done something wrong. No spark. And main power, there should be a spark if you've done something, if you've done everything correct. Because there's no inrush current protection in the BMS. Let's see if you can see or hear the spark. It's gonna be fun. Ah. It's such a tiny spark. So, now the charging port is connected, the charger is on. Will it charge first? Let's touch it. It's so difficult, but... What? It uh, flashed three green ones, now it's red and it should be turning orange. It's turning orange. But many times when I've done this, it's actually stopped charging for a little while. But we can monitor uh, the actual battery voltage on Mr. Sparky connector. Here we have 45.47, please go up. 44.49, 44.49. Forty-five point fifty-one. I think we have a winner. I think we actually successfully <laughs> repaired this Pyrex battery. Oh, Whew. yeah. But we're not done yet. We have to put everything back together. Don't damage any wires or everything. Anything can come loose. Oh, oh, yeah.